in this video, I'm going to show you how Jay Wall ran the best offense and ultimately how he won the club championship in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know who I am or what I do, basically what my channel is all about is helping people become a better Madden player. We're trying to get better at Madden at this channel. And if you want to get better at the game, go ahead and click the subscribe button because we upload eight videos a day that are designed to help you become a better player. All right, guys, so I was so pumped to watch Jay Wall end up taking down the club championships and really just have an incredible performance, in my opinion, overall with how he played, and not only just how he played, but really I thought how um, he didn't make a whole lot of mistakes. He made a couple mistakes here and there, but he didn't really beat himself, and I felt like that was one of the biggest reasons as to why he walked out of the tournament as a club champion. I feel like the players, uh, Fancy, John Beast, Pavin, all of those guys just didn't really play that great in these quarterfinals, or I'm sorry, in the semifinals and in the championship game. And we're going to dive into Jay Wall's offense and how he was able to, you know, really get some crucial, um, some 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 crucial conversions, first downs, and uh, and things like that. So we're going to jump over into practice mode here, and I have the Las Vegas Raiders offensive playbook booted up. This was Jay Wall's uh, offensive scheme. This is what he ran, and this little single back wide trips formation was actually super super important for Jay Wall. One of the things that he did was he put the 0-1 trap in his audibles here. He also had a couple of other little plays um, here and there, but really what he was using was a combination of the power O and the 0-1 trap um, in case you know they came down and, and ran some type of offense that you know or some some type of defense that really forced Jay Wall to have to have to deal with that. Another thing that he was using was this inside zone from bunch tight end. In key situations, he would audible to that, um, and then his audibles as far as passing goes, he was using in the PA counter go. Um, another play that he was using was obviously the curl flat play, one of the best plays in Madden. And then he also had a couple of other different plays uh, plays and concepts as PA shot post. He had the inside zone, of course. And then he would pre pretty much typically come out in the play X spot as his uh, primary passing place. We're going to dive into the scheme now really quickly before we get any further uh, in this offensive scheme. I wanted to let you know that I actually have an entire ebook based around the trips tight end formation in combination with the rest of the awesome formations of the New England Patriots offensive playbook. So if you want to get that full scheme from the New England Patriots playbook, which is very similar to the way J-Wall runs his trips, just a couple of nuances, a little bit different, and also you are able to access some, in my opinion, really, really phenomenal formations formations in addition to the trips head in um, we have a full New England playbook ebook out so go ahead and hit that up in the description there's a link in the description where you can pick that up and if you want a free sample just text me my numbers in the top left hand corner of the screen okay guys so I just wanted to dive in here with J wall scheme now his his play that he ran uh, really majority of the time and really his go-to passing play um, was this X was indeed this X spot um, for some reason J wall loves this post route to Chris Godwin I personally don't actually think it's that valuable that's just my personal opinion but J wall loves this post route and so one of his number one setups that he would utilize a lot would basically be to essentially have two drags he'd block his running back and then from there he would either fade route the outside guy or he would put him on an out route one of those two things i actually think that it works best if you fade him but basically you have essentially mesh post right um this is one of the his go-to concepts now this post route does do a very good job of beating man-to-man -man coverage uh right to the inside as you can see right there um, i mean it does do a really really good job of beating that coverage so you're able to beat man-to-man -man coverage with you know pretty re with relatively uh ease uh with just that simple post route now what you'll notice is when you play a really good Madden player they're going to know that and they're obviously going to you know definitely want to go ahead and take that away themselves but if you have a good beat the press receiver and he burns the press on the outside as J-Wall's uh, receivers did the majority of the game that is actually a really really good opportunity for you to be able to basically uh, pass lead to the outside and and get instant separation. Another setup that he ran from X-Spot, and this is actually probably my preferred way to run this play, um, is to simply take Scotty Miller, put him on a drag route, take Evans, and put him either on a streak route or on an out route. 
And then from there, we're going to take the tight end, put him on a crossing route, and then we might either wheel route the running back or we'll just block him, one of the two things. And this is one of my favorite ways to run this setup. I feel like this is really good against man, against zone, um, especially with the incorporation of a playmaker receiver in the slot, a receiver that has the playmaker ability, um, as J-Wall did have a uh, hot route master, but he also had the playmaker ability, which was really, really nice. Now, um, one other thing I wanted to hit on is in key situations, you would actually notice that J-Wall would go to this PA boot over. And one of the things that he did that was different than most people is he would just basically put the tight end on a crossing route. And so he basically had double crossers in combination with those other really, really good routes from the PA boot over play. Um, and also, he also used um, their inside zone because this inside zone from, from bunch tight end gets some of the best quick blocking um, in the entire game. So he was able to go to those two plays. Um, I actually just released an ebook on the bunch tight end. So if you want to pick it up, that link is also in the description. Um, and I believe the bunch tight end is, is, is probably the most simple offense that you could run, but one of the most effective offenses. And like I said, you know, J wall did a really, really good job of doing a couple of things really, really well from this. This was kind of his go-to red zone offense. Essentially what he would do is he would take Mike Evans, put him on a drag, he would then have the crossing routes to the outside guys, and he might take the running back and put him on a little wheel route or flat route, and then it would be basically this. So you had the crossing routes, you had the underneath drags, you know, basically just a lot of confusion in the middle of the field. So those were a couple of his key setups. Now another setup that he used um, in, in, in key situations was essentially to use this motion over uh, crossing route. This was kind of a, a key setup that he would use out of the... Out of the um, PA shot post. So essentially what he would do is he would smart route Mike Evans. He would then take Chris Godwin and put him on a, another crossing route, essentially a play, uh, a hot route master crossing route. He would then take Scotty Miller, put him on a drag, and then the tight end um, could be on could be on really anything. A lot of times he actually ended up blocking his tight end out of this setup so that he could get a little bit of extra time. My personal opinion would have been I think he should have dragged, um, or not dragged, but delay faded the tight end. That's what I would have done. Um, essentially done that, and then the running back was oftentimes on a wheel route uh, on the outside to basically pull the zones out of the way. And essentially this was a two-man read. You were going to either hit the crossing route to Chris Godwin, which of course I jacked up because of this. You were either going to hit the crossing route to Chris Godwin, or you were going to hit this S post route to to Mike Evans. And this was really his go-to uh, man beater. Now there was a couple of other things that he would do from this um, as well, which we'll get into in just a second. But this was kind of one of the, the key setups in my opinion. And again, what I would do is I would wheel the running back, and then obviously I would have a a delay fade out there just to just because I think it just is a little bit more effective and again you see these crossing routes does a really good job of getting open over the middle of the field now J-Wall typically when he would snap the crossing route if that receiver was going to go on a crossing route he would snap him um, right as he passed the right line of scrimmage so literally he would snap him like right about here and again, this would give him, you know, a really good opportunity. And as you can see, he would hit that hit that route to Mike Evans over and over and over again. So he was able to do, you know, kind of both of those things within this play. Now the next thing that I wanted to cover is another one of J. Wall's setups that I thought was super, super effective. And he didn't go to it a ton, but this was basically the setup that J. Wall went to whenever he knew that you were in some type of cover zero. And essentially what it is, is he would take Scotty Miller, put him on a drag, He'd block his tight end, probably would either put his running, his running back would either be on a wheel route or, you know, he might put him on like a Texas route for this specific play. He might even just block him, honestly. And then what he would do is he would take his slot and put him on a stop and go route and he would motion him to the right side. And then when they would get across the center, he would quickly smart route the route and snap him while he's in motion. And you'll see here that if they're in cover zero, that will typically cook the coverage. And as you can see, it's going to get over the top for a one-play score against cover zero. So those were a couple of the key concepts um, that J-Wall used. Obviously, um, one of the concepts that I think it ended up getting him a, a critical first down in a key moment in the game was this PA counter ghost setup, which, which basically what it entailed uh, for J-Wall was to essentially motion Chris Godwin over, and do it just like this. This setup right here, I think is the setup that actually got him a critical first down. This slant route has been effective all season long. And as you can see here, um, it's still very, very effective in combination with a crossing route and then a streak to the tight end. 
Um, and then real quick from inside zone, one of the things that he did was essentially he did a stop and go in the backfield. And the way you do that is basically you just pull back on the left joystick a little bit, not all the way, but a little bit. And you can essentially um, you can essentially pull back on that as well. Uh, and then real quick, one other setup that I thought he did that was fairly interesting was a really it was a, you didn't have to be in any particular play uh, to do this. But I would do it out of curl flat. And essentially what he did was he took Godwin, put him on a crossing route, took Mike Evans, put him on a out route. And then I would personally say to delay fade the tight end, he blocked him, but you could do either one. And then I would just smart route uh, Scotty Miller. So basically you have a slant, a crossing route, and then you have some underneath routes. These crossing routes just do a really good job at getting separation against man-to-man. -man. You see that when you motion over that crossing route, he typically gets instant separation and is able to get open against that man-to-man -man coverage. So those were a couple of J-Wall's key concepts that really led him to the victory. And i got to tell you that I thought that J-Wall, just with the, watching the way that he played, not only in his game against Fancy, but really more so against his, uh, his game against Pavin, I thought what you saw was that J-Wall just had simply a better scheme than most people. I, I really believe that. Um, I think he showed that throughout the tournament. And I'm a huge fan of J-Wall. I'm, I'm pumped that he was able to... Uh, win this tournament because I feel like it's long overdue. He's having a great Madden season right now. He's all he's proving to the world that trips tight end is a very difficult scheme to stop. And whether it be against man coverage or against zone coverage, he seems to always be confident and has been very, very effective this season. So all in all, I, I think J-Wall definitely deserves uh, to be the club champion. I think he definitely won uh, fair and square, and I think he did a great job. Now, again, did he have a really good glitch play uh, in the club championships uh, as far as the Detroit Lions club championship? Yes, he did. But if you actually think about it, again, one of the things that I respect the most about J-Wall is that he's a lab rat. He will literally practice and practice and practice and practice. That's what I try to do. I'm nowhere near as good as he is at it, but I'm trying to get there. And so, again, just shout out to J-Wall. I thought he played phenomenal. I'm going to do more breakdowns on him as I get a chance to look at the, the, the all-22 film and really dive in and dissect things. But these were a couple of the key setups that I felt like um, really set him apart and really allowed him to not only beat Fancy, but also to ultimately beat Pavin uh, in the club championship final. So congratulations to him. And, again, if you want to get my New England ebook um, that has some of these concepts in it, has some other stuff as well, um, go ahead and hit that up in the description. That link is in the description of this video. If you want to get my Bunch Tight End ebook, that link is also in the description. And then last but not least, I actually have a free Trips Tight End breakdown in my text message membership, which you can get by texting me. I'm going to throw my number back up on the screen here. My number is 812-216-3644. It's also in the description of this video. Thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys uh, on our live stream tonight at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time.